Hello, darlings. You've all heard of Marilyn Monroe. Some of you know Bridget Bardot. Well, now it's time for the cognac show. I said cognac. Ooh, ooh. I said cognac. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm your family blonde, fabulously dressed to. I'm Cognac Willa Lane and we are here at the North Shore Historical Museum and I am here with the mayor of Glen Cove and he's going to introduce himself to the camera. Hi, my name is Reginald Spinello. I'm the mayor of the city of Glen Cove where this beautiful 1907 restored courthouse is located. Now this is a very exciting thing for this museum to actually be a part of the community. And it's been much anticipated, I understand, from when I just spoke to the president. Tell my audience how thrilled you are that this has is this celebrating its second anniversary. This is a wonderful event. Uh, Brian Mercadani, who, who had the vision, has created or restored, I should say, a, a 1907 courthouse. It's been embraced by the, not only the city of Glen Cove, but the surrounding communities. They have wonderful events here. They have lectures. They have exhibits. It's well received, and it's really a very nice little addition to our great city. And tell my audience a little bit more about Glen Cove, why it is a very significant part of Long Island. Glen Cove's beautiful. Glen Cove is part of the Gold Coast. Uh, we have many mansions in the uh, Greenbelt area. Uh, it's a waterfront community, and we're in the beginning of a real revitalization here. We have this year a waterfront project starting. That's a one billion with a B dollar project that would be a, a, a thousand residential units, restaurants, a marina, commercial, retail, and we're also redoing our downtown. We have a mixed-use development coming in that'll t change Glen Cove from a bedroom community to a vibrant happening downtown. It is a beautiful community. Um, as a matter of fact, I believe my husband and I, we were, when we got married, we, uh, we were looking at different catering halls around this area. We didn't get married in Glen Cove, but we did get married in Roslyn. But it's very, very, very connected. It's a, it's a terrific community. Glen Cove has a lot of, lot of tradition, a lot of history. Most people that you see in Glen Cove have been born and raised and stay here. So when you go in the morning to have breakfast in the local coffee shop, it's like a throwback to the olden days and everyone knows everyone and there's a friendly good morning and a good cup of coffee. So it's a great place. And 
Long Island is a great place to live, don't you agree? Oh, absolutely. Long Island um, is a wonderful place. There's lots of business, there's lots of industry, but yet there's lots of open space, open parks. It, it's a rich it's a rich island with a great diversity, and, uh, and it's a proud group of people on Long Island. Absolutely. That's what Eddie Money said to me when I interviewed him. Of course, he's from Levittown, but he said... He traveled all over the world and he said there's nobody like these. The people from Long Island are the best. I agree. Well said. Okay. Tell my audience where we could go to find out more information about this museum. What is the website? The website is um, North Shore. I believe it's North Shore uh, Historic Society .com, but I don't, I'm not sure of that website address. Don't worry, we'll get it up okay. there. And thank you so much, Mayor, for that wonderful interview. Thank you. I have no idea. And don't go yet. Something. Don't go yet. We'll be back in a moment, darlings. More interviews coming up. Keep watching. Big champagne kisses. And we're here at the North Shore Historical Museum's cocktail party to celebrate their second anniversary as a museum. And I am here with this gentleman. He is the president, and he's going to introduce himself to the camera. Hi, my name is Brian Mercadante, and I'm the president of the North Shore Historical Museum here in Glen Cove, New York. And we're celebrating tonight because we've been open for two years and we've had a battle to get it open for 17 years so tell it's, it's my audience long. about the struggle that you've had getting this establishment you know uh, getting people to come here as a museum tell my audience the struggle you've had well the first thing we had to do was apply to the New York State Department of Education because museums are chartered by the New York State Department of Education and uh, we applied uh, for that in, in 1997, and we became a chartered uh, museum in 1998. At that time, we knew we wanted to be a museum. Uh, we started to raise money, we started to raise funds. Uh, we did small shows in City Hall and at the library, uh, and we raised funds to get this courthouse back. And then we eventually we got the courthouse back. And we've raised over a million dollars for the museum in, the, in, the, in that period of time, that 17 years. And then we restored this building. This building was uh, in terrible shape. Uh, it had been used for uh, a satellite courthouse from the town of Oyster Bay. It was built in 1907 when Teddy Roosevelt was president of the United States. My goodness, over 100 years ago. Isn't that amazing? Well, it was a very cool time to be here because the Pratt family was here then. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt lived in Oyster Bay. Uh, there were a, a lot of wealthy people in the area. J.P. Morgan lived here. Um, Woolworth lived here. And people came out here by steamboat. So they, they came out here at that time uh, for vacations. This was like the Hamptons. I know. So, Isn't that something how, so they how came out here the world has here changed, how history has changed. Now everyone goes to the Hamptons instead of the Gold Coast of Long Island. Well, they have cars now and planes and helicopters. But back then, they did a lot of travel by uh, steamship because they all didn't have cars and there were not enough roads. And so that, that's where they came out here. And uh, this was started by Oyster Bay. They built the building as a satellite courthouse, as I said. And then Glen Cove became a city. It broke away from the town of Oyster Bay in 1917. And the town of Oyster Bay gave this building to the city of Glen Cove for its first uh, government. I see that you have a lot of different exhibits. Um, how many exhibits are here right now as we speak? Well, we have some permanent exhibits which are always on display. And then we rotate other exhibits. The big rotation uh, is uh, World War I, which we're just, we're just ending that exhibit right now. Uh, there was a Marine uh, named Daly, and uh, he got two medals of honor, and they just renamed the highway here after him. And uh, he, was, he was in World War I, and uh, the Marine Corps came here to town, and they went up to the high school, and it was, it was a big, big, big event because of his heroics. Because of his heroics. Now, I notice that you have these planes, they're fabulous, that are hanging here. What is that all about? 
uh, that was the type of planes that they had, biplanes, and you know nothing like the planes of today. Absolutely, they're nothing like the planes of did, today. They did have aircraft, and you know they did have the first machine guns, and they did have the first um, long-range ca cannon and artillery. Fighter planes, these planes. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's like the Red Baron's plane. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, so now you're stepping down, and this year you will be stepping down as president. That's correct. Who will be the new president of the uh, North Shore Historical Museum? Uh, Georgie Kinnett is the new president. The whole new slate uh, has been elected. They start actually tomorrow. Yeah. So today is my last day as president. Uh, and. Uh, and that's why they're really giving you, this party is for you. They're giving you the party because you have been you have served this community and the historical museum and you should be, you should be given an award for that, truly. Well, they are honoring me with the title of President Emeritus. So that's a way that I can continue uh, having a title and working for the museum. I'm still on the board of directors. You know, it's still, you know, close to my heart. I'm just giving up my everyday duties. And I'll continue to raise money for the museum. Tell my audience, where can we go to find out more information? What is the website? Uh, www.NorthShoreHistoricalMuseum.org is the website. And uh, you can go there and we put uh, announcements about our future events are, are on there and you can become a member. If you become a member, you'll get periodic mailings. If you give us your email, we'll put you on an email blast mm -hmm. so that you can get uh, updates more frequently than the periodic mailings. Mm -hmm. And you're so. also on Facebook as well, too, right? Yes, that's fairly new. Social media is fairly new for us, but we're attempting to you know, make... Everybody make is, campaign. everybody is. Well, I want to thank you so much for that wonderful interview. Don't go away yet. Give me a kiss. We'll be back in a moment with more interviews right here at the North Shore Historical Museum Cocktail Party. Keep watching, darlings. Pink champagne kisses. Hello, darlings. You've all heard of Marilyn Monroe. Some of you know Bridget Fardell. dressed to impress one of a kind girl. It's been a crybaby productions darlings